Hello everybody, looks like we are live. Welcome, this is Drawing Together. I'm Scott with Artist Network. I see a large group here. We're gonna be working on this drawing here, the smile. This is a kind of initial, an initial attempt that I've made. It's not finished, and I have to tell you, I really struggled with this one. <laughs> it was a little much harder than I thought it would be. Um, I mean, I, I have several attempts that I just kind of scrapped, in large part because I had a hard time really locking onto the subject of this drawing. And, you know, I think originally I was thinking more of it being a portrait, right? You know, where it's, you know, where, where the woman happens to be smiling. Um, but as I was doing it, I realized that ultimately it's about the smile itself, and I really wanted to focus on that. And so this final attempt, as, as you can see that I've started here, um, starts to just kind of crop everything and really just bring that, that smile into, into focus. So that's really what we're going to be working on today. Rather than doing a whole new portrait, I want to take the time to really work out what's happening in the structure of the mouth, working with the teeth. That's something that I've heard from uh, several of you that, um, that you might find helpful. Um, and I learned a lot myself just doing this initial attempt. So we're gonna give that a shot today. I'm gonna be working in charcoal. I've got my charcoal pencils here. I've got vine charcoal to start off with. And I've got my shading stumps as well as my kneaded and rubber erasers. So the kind of the standard tools I've been using for a lot in the series, but I think a lot of what we do here, you can apply um, to graphite as well. I don't really don't think um, that you know that you're gonna have any trouble if you're working graphite. I choose charcoal because it just shows up better on camera. Um, so this is where we're heading today. Before I get going, I see a few questions here that I want to call out. I love seeing where everybody is um, viewing from. So there is a question about um, a spray fixative from Richard. I honestly, I don't really use it. I, I did find a couple cans recently that I forgot I had, um, but I, it's just not something that I use. Um, uh, and I think JC, you um, you kind of called out as well, is that it can sometimes cause a color contrast shift. Um, and if if I ever do a drawing that I want to preserve, I think the best way to do that is to put it in a frame, mat it, um, or you know put it under plastic or something rather than use the spray fixative. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, and especially when it says workable, it's often not quite as workable as. Um, as I'd like in the sense that you can generally add on top of it, but it is hard to erase back down. So um, I, there was another question too, Karen, you're asking about the workspace. So this is a space that I have um, kind of set up specifically for live streaming. It's just a corner um, in a downstairs room. I have, uh, I can't remember, It's a, I believe it's called a Soho easel and it allows my, me to go vertical as well as all the way flat. And I have it pitched up at about a 25 degree angle or so. This is an 18 by 24 drawing board that I have everything taped down to. Um, this is what I have set up to stream from. It's not exactly how I would draw and, or paint naturally. I would uh, prefer to work more vertically. Um, but just in order to get the cameras um, aligned and to kind of create something that works for camera, I have it at this and it, it works okay. I like to have it at least some angle. When it's perfectly flat, it gets really tricky um, in part because we're constantly compensating for, for that perspective shift um, and it can often distort the drawing. So if you, if you are working flat, you know, throughout the whole drawing process, keep tipping it up so that you're perpendicular to it and see if uh, your proportions are holding up, if the perspective is holding up from there. Um, so hopefully that helps answer your question. I do have some good lights in here because I have a photo light that I, we grabbed from the studio. Um, you know, I, I work for, of course, Artist Network. We created a lot of videos with artists, so we have a fully functioning video studio. So I have access to a fair amount of equipment, including some nice studio lights here. Um, uh, we have a question about sharpening uh, pencils. So this is the pencil that I'll be working with mostly. Um, and I take a razor blade and I shave it down. If I pull this blade up here, um, what I like to do is you just kind of sneak up on it. So I'm, I'm using the pressure of my thumb here to kind of guide it forward. And I like to go in at an angle rather than going perfectly parallel with the core of the, of the charcoal there, kind of go at a slight angle and that kind of spirals around it a little bit. And I find that that helps to minimize the, the breaking of the, the charcoal core. Um, and then I'll take a piece of sandpaper uh, I've got it over here and I'll just, I'll just lay it down flat and I'll just kind of sand it down into a point. 
Um, and that often happens throughout the drawing process as well. That's one of the reasons I like to use the side of my pencils while I work, is that it's constantly refining that fine point so I can utilize that when I need it. But that's typically how I do it. And then I often will have it sharpened on the end as well. So then I have a, a kind of a, a, a pencil sharpener sharpened end, um, as well as one that's sharpened with the razor blade here. So hopefully that explains it a little bit. Um, and then of course I have my, my kneaded eraser. This is a fairly new one. Um, you can see my old one here. So this, this got me through the first, what, 38 episodes, I think, of the, of the drawings uh, series, plus, you know, the preparatory drawings that I did. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, 75 drawings or so just with this one kneaded eraser. Um, and it's still usable. It's just a little, little gummed up right now. So I decided to switch to this new one. So, um, Material discussions out of the way. If you are following along, make sure you bring up the image in the description below. There's a link to it there. Um, check out artistnetwork.com, the Drawing Together page, where you'll find links to all of the show pages, and you will um, you'll be able to share your work with others. I saw some amazing portraits come in over the weekend. A lot of you were posting uh, some of the portraits that we did last week. Um, I saw a few of the, the wave drawings as well. So nicely done. Every, everybody's doing some really nice work. So thank you for sharing all of that. Um, uh, Lee, you mentioned glassine works really well to prepare, protect drawings. I think that's a wonderful point. Um, it's something that I use for pastel work is to put a sheet of glassine between them. Um, because I, you know, it's very rare to actually frame something. You know, I'll do a hundred paintings or hundred drawings, and maybe one of those is is worth it for me to frame. So, um, but I like to preserve all those, and I think glassine is a great way to do that. So, um, to least, let's see. So we're gonna dig right into it. If you do have any questions, typing them out in all caps it is helpful. Hopefully, we're not gonna have any sort of internet issues today. Um, it's been a little spotty. Somebody dug through the, the uh, fiber lines in the area last week or you know, recently, and then it shut down internet for a while. So um, I have my reference image up here that I'll be referring to. So what I'm looking up, that's what I'm looking at. Um, and right in front of me, I have a projection of this camera above me so I can see um, what it looks like if I were perpendicular. And that helps to simulate what would happen if I were to work vertically. Um, uh, that's, yep. Uh, thank you, Mary Jo, for calling that out um, about the reference photo here. So yeah, bring that up if you want, or if you just want to watch and do your drawing later, that's fine as well. Um, I'm actually going to going to start with this. Um, let me be this older shading stump. Um, I like to use these shading stumps as a way to kind of map out some of the 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 main features here. Uh, it's just a light line that allows me to sneak up on the values a little bit more. Uh, and I need to kind of think through um, where I'm going to be placing this. And if the smile is the primary focal point, I, uh, I want to kind of build everything around that and make sure that that fits. This is where I really struggled in the initial attempts is coming up with the composition. Um, and, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll come up with something. This may end up ultimately just being an exercise in... Uh, in drawing a mouth, and it may not be quite as finished of a drawing as uh, some of the others in the series, but we'll we'll see. Uh, so I, I'm switching over to the vine charcoal here because that that shading stump is not quite loaded with charcoal the way uh, the way I want. Uh, one of the things that I'm thinking about as I do this is I'm utilizing again the side of the charcoal pencil. Using the side of your materials is really a um, a really a key aspect of, of, of my drawing process at least and it might be helpful to you as well so if you're used to utilizing the point um, you know holding it in this tripod grip like we do when we're writing then um, try just utilizing the side you find that you get a lot more versatility out of the marks that way um, so I'm just kind of blocking in some of the major shapes now with this being vine charcoal it's all going to be very light and soft it's all going to go away at some point. It's just going to wipe away. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about it being permanent. I'm, this is really for my brain. I'm trying to just mostly get my, uh, my head around what am I actually drawing here. I'm just getting information on the page so that I have something to react to. Uh, and I'm trying not to think about anatomy structure or anything at this point. I'm just trying to 
react naturally. This is gesture drawing. You know, this is the heart of what gesture drawing is all about. And if you're kind of new to figurative work, you probably have, have heard that term, but I get a lot of questions about that actually. You know, how do you define gesture? And gesture, it really is, it's a reaction to the form and the way an object fills the space. Um, and sometimes it can be helpful to almost think of them kind of from the inside out. So rather than thinking about the contour, um, you know, like you might think about kind of the, the angle of the cheek, maybe come from an inner, uh, an inner kind of access to it, kind of the basic angle that that upper lip might be tilted at, um, and then the teeth, and then that bottom lip, and just trying to think through the paths that these forms are on, rather than the forms themselves. So, um, one of the things that I mentioned earlier, though, is that it's this stage is more about getting information on the page um, that I can react to. And I can make specific decisions about where things need to go. Um, this is an area that really tripped me up as well. So what I liked about this reference photo, and I found this on Pixabay, um, is I, I like the light. You know, she's generally got a light that's striking her from the front, but she's at this three-quarter angle where there's a distinct shadow side, and then you have this dark background. So you have this alternating sequence of dark to light to dark again. And that's generally really effective um, in giving me the information that I need to complete the drawing. But um, what I found is that then for the mouth specifically, there's a little less of that contrast. As we work through this middle band here, we have relatively, it gets a little bit lighter in the background. Um, we fall into a little bit of a shadow here, so there's very little value shift here. And then we kind of wrap around and we get some shadow on the mouth here and then in the shadow. But right in this area, there's not a whole lot of value contrast. And, that, and so that's something that I want to be mindful of um, and see how we can manage that in the drawing. Um, so this can ultimately be also an exercise in, you know, how do you pull a drawing out of something that may not necessarily be quite as dramatic um, and dynamic in the, the reference photo, if that makes sense. There are a few key um, anchor points that I'm looking at right now. So right in here, there's this shadow in the cheek, and it gets really pronounced here in that crease from that smile. Really essential in terms of illustrating that she's smiling and capturing that smile. Um, that's in a particular location, and what I want to do now is use that to place the nose and then the chin. So if I measure up from that, I can see where that is relative to uh, the nostril, the, the tip of the nose, etc. And I can also measure down. These are plumb lines. Measure down and see how it relates to the chin. Um, and, and in general, what I'm noticing is that if I look at this negative shape in here, the chin kind of undercuts, and there's a slight angle, and it brings it that, that, that the left-hand point of that angle it comes in line with that. And so the, there's kind of a, an angle, a slant to the mouth here, carrying from the chin through that lower lip, you know, past the teeth to the upper lip, where it kind of angles out that way. Um, so what I'm, what I'm doing here now is, I'm kind of like, this arm is blocking the, the, the paper, but I have the reference image in front of me, and that's vertical. I'm closing one eye to give myself monocular vision. I lose any sort of depth perception. And I'm aligning this stick of charcoal with the angle of the upper lip. Um, and that helps me to visualize what that angle is on the page. And now if I was working on an easel, I would have these next to one another. I would have a live model and then I would have my easel. And I could easily just transfer that angle over. I can lock the wrist and just carry it across. And I can check angles that way. And as I mentioned earlier in this setup, it doesn't necessarily allow me to do that. I can get this angle. I have to hold that angle in my mind and then try to transfer it down. Um, and so this is um, what is helpful now is I have the, the, the camera in front of me is, and, the, and the screen in front of me is capturing what this overhead camera is doing. So I can see my drawing in front of me vertically. And so that's actually what I'm going to be using to evaluate my angles. So I'm, I'm hoping that that helps to explain uh, kind of what's happening here in a, in a process that you might respond to. So if I, have, um, if I have marks here on the page, I can then use my comparative measuring, I can use my angle sighting to compare to the, what's happening on the screen, not necessarily what's happening on the paper. So 
So I'm getting, I'm just kind of putting marks down and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to start to evaluate the proportion. So I want to look at the height of the lip, compare that to the, how much we see of the teeth, and then the upper lip. Now, uh, if, you're, if you're new to the series, um, it might be helpful to look back. Early on, I did a, um, a drawing of just a nose and a mouth, so the mouth was closed, and I talk a bit about the structure of the lips. Um, what's significant here is that with the smile, all that structure changes now. You know, we see the teeth, um, we get harder edges that, where they might be soft when the mouth is relaxed, and in particular, it's that upper lip. You know, if, if I had a photo of this model when, with her mouth closed, um, I would be able to see that contrast between the lip being relaxed versus kind of stretched out with a smile. Um, but it becomes really difficult to see the, that basic structure there. Everything gets kind of stretched out. And so that's a, something that we really want to kind of pay attention to and, and make sure that we're not relying on our preconceived notions about how to draw a lip. You know, so um, we're going to try to make very specific observations here. Um, one of the things that we also see is how the lip kind of wraps around so that we're looking straight on at this lip as it wraps back around the teeth into the cheek comes out across and there's a distinct kind of front plane here and then it turns a corner it makes an angle here and then back into this mouth uh, back into the corner of the mouth here and you can see I've got made multiple attempts at this because I'm not quite sure where where that line should be so within there within those lines is something that's correct all right so Okay, so now I'm going to do some comparative measuring. What I was doing earlier is called angle sighting. So you're finding the angle of an axis, the, you know, the, the, the axis that maybe the eyes or the mouth fall on, um, maybe the angle of a cheekbone. That's called angle sighting. Comparative measuring now looks at specific distances and relationships between elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this pencil up, and again, closing one eye flattens my, my depth perception. So then the, this charcoal seems like it's right on top of the photo. I'm aligning the top of the charcoal with the top of her tooth there, her front tooth, the widest part of, of, her, of the gap between her lips, and then the bottom. So just getting the height of the teeth, and I'm sliding this thumb up to, to meet the bottom edge. So then what's exposed of the charcoal represents the height of the teeth. I'm keeping this arm straight, fully extended, because if I move my hand in, it's going to change the scale of relationship between that measurement I'm making right now and the teeth. So I want to have that, have that fully extended, I'm going to, and I'm going to compare the height of the teeth to that bottom lip. And what I'm seeing is that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So the height of the teeth in here is the same as the distance between the, the, or the length of that, that, and the height of that bottom lip. So this right here should be the same as this. So these three lines here, that line representing the top lip, the top of the bottom lip, and the bottom of the bottom lip, that should be equidistant. Now I'm going to take that same measurement, the height of, the, of the, that front tooth, and I'm going to turn it on its side, and I'm going to compare that to the width of the mouth. And one of the things I see is that if I, if I indicate that center tooth, the gap between the center tooth, there's, she, doesn't, she doesn't have a gap, but you can see that fine line. This distance here, the height, is the same as the, the width on the left-hand side. Um, so where, we, where that, that lip kind of wraps back around. And now I'm going to compare that, that same height to then the distance from that center point out over here. And it's about three of these. So if I take this height and I compare that, uh, carry that across, I get one, two, and three, and that puts me right into the corner of the mouth. And then what's happening down in here is difficult for me to tell. I kind of lose that line between the lip and then that, you know, the the top rounded part of the lip and then that, that lower part. So I'm just going to let that kind of be kind of soft there. And 
And so now I've broken this down into essentially one, two, three, four units, um, taking the height of that, that tooth as a single unit. So one, two, three, four. And so then that center of the tooth um, is over here. We have one unit to the left, three to the right. And, and then let's see, what do I have here? And I can start to kind of rough in kind of the, 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 the shape of the teeth. I want to keep these really light, but I want to be able to kind of evaluate that. We're going to come back around to the teeth in a little bit. Right now, I want to make sure that the parameters are, are functioning uh, properly here. Before I get any farther, I want to uh, check again on any of the questions here. Um, hello, everybody. Um, it's awesome to see everybody coming, chiming in. A lot of places that are really hot right now, so hopefully everybody's staying cool. Um, uh, yeah, there's a question about um, the, uh, the materials. Yeah, I'm working with charcoal, but I think if you're working with graphite, a lot of this stuff is going to be um, relevant to that. So, all right, so I'm going to kind of soften this up a little bit around in here. We're focusing on the mouth, and I think we'll just build out from there. Um, now, one of the things that might be helpful, though, is to establish a bit more of the surroundings so that I have more points of reference um, to make my, um, my evaluations from. So I have a rough placement of the nose. I'm going to use that same unit of measure, the height of the tooth, and I'm going to compare that to the distance um, of the, up, the height of the upper lip. And that looks like another one-to-one -one relationship. So if I take this distance here, the height of that front tooth, and I carry it up, um, then the bottom of that, the, the nose should be right around there. You could, so you can see my initial drawing is, placement of the nose is too high. So two things could have happened. I could, I could I, probably what I did is I shrunk the mouth to fit the height that I had established. Um, what I could have done is changed the height to make it fit around everything else. So there's there's more than one way to fix a proportion um, correction there. Um, so say if I wanted to put that nose there and keep that where it is, then I would need to change the scale of the mouth to meet that. Um, but in this case, since I already have that mouth mostly drawn in, I'm gonna adjust the nose um, and, and gonna go from there. Um, and All right, I think we're back now. Sorry about that. Everything cut off for a second there. Um, all right. I'm good. Thank you for those comments, Greg, Wilma, everybody. I appreciate that. I, I always enjoy feedback. If if there's something that I'm saying that is not clear, let me know. I always it's I view it as my responsibility to explain what I'm doing sufficiently to students. Now, in this situation, I'm not necessarily a teacher. We're here to draw together, but. Um, Everybody learns things in different ways, and so if the way I'm teaching in is not effective to you, um, I'd love to hear it so I can find another way to try to explain it. Um, and it, it helps me because then it, it, it forces me to confront some of these issues in a new way. Um, so I always welcome feedback um, of any kind. If then something's happening on the drawing in particular, um, it, can be, it can be really helpful. So I'm sorry about that internet interruption there. I need to reload the screen. Let's see, because I'm not seeing the chat. So in the meantime, I'm going to keep drawing. Are we back? I don't know what it is. It's, uh, it, it seems like once since it's gotten warm, the internet it just every now and then just kind of resets. So if, we ha if it happens throughout this drawing, it just, just know that it's going to, it'll come back. Um, it's, I believe it's my internet that just kind of cropped out for a second, sir. So, so I, I'm sorry for that. Um, welcome from Scotland. All right. Um, I'm joining you all from Colorado, beautiful Colorado, where it's nice and warm. I was able to get up to the mountains recently, and I sure enjoy that. I hope everybody else is able to get out and about safely. Um, but we here are here, this is drawing together, because um, we're here to join together as a community to, to sharpen our skills in drawing 
uh, challenge ourselves in particular ways. I'm a, I'm a painter um, primarily, and so this whole series was developed as a way for me to, to really confront the fact that I had neglected my drawing skills for a long time. So um, it's something that is really easy to do. It's, it's so easy to be seduced by the, the color of, of oil paints or acrylics, whatever material you're using. Um, and, but I, I just find that I, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to draw and sharpen that skill. I went out painting um, over the weekend and I, I found that my reaction to um, proportions was improved um, because of my practice drawing here. So hopefully if you are all experiencing the same, you know, same result, I, I, I'm, I'm really hope, hopeful that that's happening. Um, so, uh, so as I mentioned, again, the gap between the upper lip and the bottom of the nose is, a, is a, about equivalent. So we have these four evenly spaced lines here. It's, one of the things that gets really tricky about proportions, um, and, and I, I really find it true with portraits more than anything, is that the more we focus on a, a single object, the, the more it tends to... Um, to grow in our minds and then on the page. You know, our, our visual system is all designed for us to make, inf make sense of what's in front of us. And we take in a lot of information. So, you know, if you, know, if you, can, if you can find the, the limits of your peripheral vision and at 360 degrees, we're taking in all that information, but we only focus on a very small portion, like 1% of that entire field of vision is actually in focus. But that can take up in the entirety of our mind um, and we can come, it's easy to get fixated on something. And when we do that, we tend to draw that relationship. Um, we tend to, to make things bigger because they're taking up a bigger part of our, of our brain. Um, and so you know, just these proportion techniques that we're working through today help to override that. You know, so, it, you know, drawing that nose, for example, when I'm looking at the reference image and I'm looking at the nose, that becomes the only thing my mind sees. And as a result, it's, I have a tendency to make it larger um, or place it in the wrong spot. Um, and the same can happen with the mouth. And that's why it's really important to keep floating around the drawing. You kind of make a stab, move to another spot, make another stab, and you keep moving through the drawing and try not to get too fixated on one area. Uh, so now what I need to do is I need to look at the height of that, the distance from the that this bottom edge of the lip to that chin. And if I'm going to use the height of the tooth as a unit of measure, I'm measuring one, two, about two and a half. So I can take this and measure down one, two, about two and a half. So you can see that I had drawn that, um, that chin too low. So really, I think my initial attempts were probably pretty close in terms of the proportions, but I shrunk up the mouth and I need to make everything else shrink up around it. All right, now um, this, is, this area here is gonna be kind of tricky. I think I need to come in as well here. So I'm gonna use that same unit of measure, the height of the tooth. Ah, that's an interesting um, proportion. So if I take this height and I measure from, from the edge of that tooth over that edge of the mouth is, is right here, way the heck in there. I, made, I drew it way too wide. So I'm gonna do a little bit of kind of negative drawing. So I, I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on this area, but I think it's important because I'm gonna be kind of taking in those, those proportions kind of subconsciously. So hopefully that's a bit more accurate. Um, you know, it's certainly not refined. All right, so now I can come across here, indicate, and do some angle sighting. That's working out pretty well. Do some angle sighting here on that, on the, the cheek there. It's an important aspect of indicating the smile. So, you know, one of the things we've talked about when we've done portrait work in the past 
And again, I am not naturally a portrait artist. It's not something I do a lot of, so that's why we're, we're, uh, we're practicing this. Um, but one of the things we talked about is creating something that's unified. So the mouth doesn't exist in isolation. It's part of an entire system. It's connected to all the muscles. And, and we, when we spend um, our time focusing not only on the feature itself, but the spaces between the features, that ties everything together. And it's so easy to view the mouth as an isolated feature and think of it as a mouth, but the mouth really is a system. You know, you've got the lips, you've got the muscles around it that, that you know, shift and pull and twist and they're tied to the cheeks and those are connected to the eyes and those are connected and then, and it's also connected to the nose. So everything changes when you smile or when, you're, when, you're, um, when your features are at rest. Um, and so you, you know, when we're drawing a smile, it's not that we're just making, drawing, drawing the mouth, we're drawing everything in the head that's attached to that. And that's what indicates a smile. You know, there's always that saying that people smile with their eyes, right? Um, and it's true because all those muscles are interconnected. All right, I need to... So what you see what I'm doing with the charcoal is I'm kind of laying it down, I'm kind of wiping it down. Um, I'm gonna use my kneaded eraser to pull out some of the highlights here and get some of that negative drawing. Just trying to indicate the shape of the nose. There's kind of a highlight there. Nothing, nothing detailed, but I need to have enough here. I'm kind of essentially setting the stage by, by indicating what's in the space around the, uh, around the mouth. So if I'm happy with, say, the corner of the mouth being in here, I can measure up, do a plumb line up there, and start to relate that to the eye. Um, and see if that fits there. I'm not sure if I want to indicate the eye at this point. Um, it's one of the nice things about the vine charcoal is that it's so soft, you can test things out in a way that can be challenging with the, the compressed charcoal. Uh, so we're already half an hour into this, this drawing, and you can see that I haven't done any rendering, I'm just building up um, the proportions and, and it's continuing to kind of refine those. Um, one of the things now I want to shift my thinking to is the structure of light and shadow because I find that it's, it's uh, more effective, I think, in the end to bring light and shadow into the drawing early rather than then think linearly and then add the shadow. So if, if I had done this all as an outline and then built the shadows into that, what I tend to do is, that's less effective is then everything starts to feel like it's broken apart. And so I want to use light and shadow as a unifying tool, bring everything into that same light source. Um, and so what I want to start to see now is, is what is happening with the basic structure of light and shadow. And you can see that across the front of the, the, the face here is that there's generally this kind of cylindrical form here underneath the nose. The light's hitting it more strongly here and then it wraps around into shadow. Um, and so if I can kind of indicate that, that helps me to start from a point where everything is unified by the light. Um, and then we see that happening around here. As we wrap around, we're kind of losing some of this side of the cylinder, but it generally falls into shadow as well. And then that upper lip, there's an angle to it that tips into shadow here towards the base of the nose. The light comes a little bit stronger here, so I can start to layer that shadow in there as well. So just utilizing the side of the charcoal, I can start to do that. And it's one of the nice things about utilizing this technique is I can very quickly shift between thinking about it as a shape and, um, and then into a line. Squinting my eyes uh, while I do this to try to see that basic shape of light and shadow, when you do that, it might be easier to see that shadow that crosses over the teeth. Um, and that's the same with the white of the eyes as well. As our brain says, oh, those are white teeth, or that's the white of the eyes. Um, and we, when we focus on those features, it makes it harder to actually see the structure of light and shadow. But when we squint our eyes, we realize that the teeth back in here, even though they're white, 
are in shadow and we can compare that to the values in the front of the mouth where the, um, the, the teeth are getting struck more by light. Um, and as we come in under here, we can start to see that, you know, we have that generally cylindrical form across here, but then that, that lower lip kind of has an angle and then the chin has another angle. They kind of create this almost kind of hourglass-like form. So I want to start to see that structure as well. So this falls into shadow because it's kind of slanted in inward back a little bit, a little bit darker up here. And then it, we hit the light here and then wrap around into shadow underneath here. So very kind of subtle indicators of that light and shadow, but I think, but I think it's going to be helpful in the end to have that in mind as I go. Um, I also see light in here that's striking, but it's not nearly as bright as what we have over here. So I want to be mindful of that as well. If I need to, I can start to reinforce some of the marks that are kind of lost in the shadows there. Okay, so I think now I'm at a point where I can bring in the, um, the compressed charcoal and start to refine this a little bit more. But I think as a gesture, it still, it kind of captures her smile pretty well. And I think we'll be able to even extract more of that expression as we go. Um, let's see, just checking here. See if there's any questions. Looks like everybody's good to go. All right. And again, this is going to be all about the mouth. So I'm going to just kind of lightly indicate some of the features of the nose, but I'm not going to really kind of render them. I, what I just want to avoid is them being a distraction. And while I'm doing this, I'm trying to be mindful of when I'm making this mark here on the nostril, I want to make sure that it's in the right spot. So I'm putting my attention also on where it is relative to the mouth, make sure that that's relatively consistent with the, um, with the, the reference photo. Um, and when you're confronting curves, try to see them as a sequence of short, straight segments that accumulate together and then try to round them out. Uh, and I think you'll find that the, the marks become more natural looking that way. They feel more natural and correct. Um, rather than try to like take the whole curve of the nose in one go, uh, try to break that apart. Um, here's some negative drawing here, drawing the nostril Rendering the nostril by drawing that dark um, shape here that forms underneath that cheek, kind of tucking into the corner of the mouth. Uh, KD Labs is asking where to get the materials. These are general, just actually, these are, <laughs> these are general's pencils, but they're generally just uh, um, easy materials to find. Um, these are 4B charcoal pencils that I'm using. I have a Strathmore rubber eraser. I have a Prismacolor kneaded eraser. Um, but if you go to the art supply, any art supply store in your area, they should have all of these materials um, available to you. If not, you can find them online, like a, a store like Blick or something. Um, here in Colorado, I, I like to go to Jerry's Artorama. That's the one that's closest to me here. And I, I just prefer to, to um, go into an art supply store so I can see the materials. Um, so again, I'm, this is all in service of the drawing the mouth, but I, need to, I want to give myself enough information here that it's not going to be distracting as I draw the mouth. Uh, so this is kind of this goes into what I was saying earlier in um, in the the video here is that you know utilizing the side of the charcoal I'm constantly refining the point so then I get I have this fine point that I can utilize when I need it. Um, I think that's that's working out all right. We can start to see the the structure forming. And this is starting to bother me that, that kind of this halo around here, it's a pretty kind of mucky right along in this edge. I did not do a very good job kind of cleaning that up. So let me use my shading stump. What I need to be doing is 
kind of just smoothing this out a little bit so again so it doesn't become too much of a distraction do some negative drawing in here so I'm just using my kneaded eraser and pulling out some of the uh, you know some of the edges edges here and kind of cleaning up some of the edges drawing that cheek it's pulling up too much charcoal so then I can just kind of wipe over it like that and kind of soften that edge all right um, I don't think I need to have a sharper edge at this point. Um, yes, in the materials, the lists are in the materials below. Uh, and it, uh, list of materials are in the, below there in the description. But I think, you know, really, I, I think utilizing materials that work for you is something that I've talked about, about in some other episodes as well, is that, you know, think about what resonates for you as as an artist um, you know there's what looks good right and and then there's kind of what aligns with the way you process information um, I just I work better with charcoal it seems to match the, sh the pace of my thoughts and I, I call that working at the speed of thought you know so what materials allow you to execute on your observations at the rate at which you process those observations um, you know so I like I said, I you know I've done some um, graphite work in this series, but I just find that charcoal works better for me. It's it's more of a painterly medium in the sense that it it allows me to think more like I do when I paint. Um, and whereas graphite, it's a little bit slower for me. I, I slow down my thoughts. I slow down my observations. Marks are thoughts. You know, it's all we're all just processing information there. So. All right, so that, that feels a bit better. I'm just doing a quick check in some of these other areas. I'm gonna just let this be sketchy in here for now. I wanna keep my eyes soft in their focus. And I'm gonna try to build the structure around the mouth um, and work my way in. And, and in doing so, my hope is that it's going to be um, feel unified. It feel like it's going to it's part of the head and not just a feature that's stuck onto it. You know, the term I used in the last portrait drawing is kind of like thinking about it as a as a Mr. Potato Head, right? Where and I've seen uh, students do that, where you know the we draw draw a shape for the head and then the eyes get plopped on there, and the nose gets plopped on there, and you get the mouth, and uh, and then they they become you know nice features that are not integrated together. Um, instead, we wanna be thinking about this more like a sculpture, like this is all one form and we're pushing and pulling and moving the materials around. Um, stabbing uh, kind of in some areas, moving quickly, you know, making an observation, getting it down there quickly and then moving on so that we don't get bogged down in the details and we don't allow ourselves to kind of distort our observations because again the more we stare at something the more it tends to to distort uh, um, on the page so I'm just switching between my charcoal and my shading stump and I'm utilizing both of them on their side so it's just kind of keeping that material on the surface what tends to happen if we go into this tripod grip you can see how the point of the pencil is going into the paper that tends to make a more permanent mark and so that's something that I'll utilize later in the drawing when I need to add more detail. So I'm just building up charcoal, trying to see the general shape of the shadow in here. And then hopefully like magic, this will all come together. And one of the things we also talk about in this series is getting through that ugly duckling stage. I would call this the ugly duckling stage, right? Where you, it, I love that moment when you're, you're working on a drawing and you feel like it could just fall apart. Um, there, it, it, and you have to kind of fight for it. And that's where I really feel like some good drawing happens. And I love it when I see, um, I see evidence of the artist's struggle in the work. Um, but just kind of know that it's very common for a drawing to go through what I call the ugly duckling stage, where you just feel like, oh my God, this is not, Coming together because we so wanted to get to that end, that finish stage earlier, you know, because that's where the, the the satisfaction really comes in is when you you have like these nicely rendered features and 
all this precise detail. Um, but I, I feel like you've got to get through that stage where, you know, it, it may not come together. Try to bring up the whole drawing at once so that it, uh, it all feels unified. You're literally drawing the image out on the page. It's there and you're pulling it out. So again, I'm kind of focusing on the structure around the mouth here. So I'm trying to look at these, the shapes of the light and dark as kind of more abstract forms here. And there's this little bit of light that's catching in the corner, and I want to try to observe that shape and see how it transitions down the lip to tie that together. It's about that anchor point right, right now. Um, and that's really kind of, kind of tricky. So what I might have to do is use my eraser to try to try to observe that shape. So if I if I draw this kind of snake-like form that comes out along here, um, it, what it does is it helps to form that turn on that lip. So there, it's relatively flat back in here, and it makes a turn then down along the side of the lip. And I, I really feel like that structure is going to be really important in capturing that expression to try to see that three-dimensional form. And so the way that light catches along that ridge is important. Now what's happening, what I did there though, is I drew it as a line that runs along here and it needs to be kind of softened a little bit. And so I'm going to pull this down and, and instead treat it like a path, but create that, that mark as an accumulation of, of marks that run in a different direction along that path, if that makes sense. Um, again, one of the things that we've talked about in this series before is that when we draw a line, um, it's an indication to the viewer's mind that it's the edge of an object. And so if we draw lines too heavily, say on the lips, then we see it that see it as a as a bunch of different objects kind of stuck together. Our brain interprets it as different objects rather than one object. So we just want to be really careful with how we render our contour edges. And so if you see a thin mark, like, like right along in here, that lip, if I draw it as a line, um, it may create too much differentiation there. It may separate from the rest of the forms. So instead I can visualize that path and I can create that, that mark um, by wiggling the pencil in a horizontal or vertical manner as I move horizontally across that path. Um, so it's one of the things that I think is really helpful to practice is if you're not accustomed to that, is visualize that path. I'm just kind of floating across there, but then create the marks by creating an accumulation of marks that run perpendicular to that path. And then right along in here, I can soften this up. And then right in here, this, this line here cuts in across on top of that, that lower lip and then right into that, um, that little hook right there in the corner that I've overstated. Need to soften that. But that, I think that's ultimately going to create that, that look of the, the smile. But I'm, I'm kind of I'm spending a lot of time in here because that's going to be it's so kind of critical to, to creating that structure. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm thinking about the cross contour of this lip. Uh, I'm imagining almost like there's a mesh or something that on top of this lip, you know, what, how would those lines move as we move across the, the features? It gets darker in here. So I'm trying to visualize the angle. There's an angle this way, and then it, it kind of it kind of slants in, and then it also wraps around. There's this compound form that we're observing. That's what makes facial features so tricky, is that it's all a sequence of compound forms, curves that move in multiple directions. All right, 
Okay, so oh, then there's this, you see the slight uh, indication of a muscle right in under here. And I think that's going to be important too. The, sometimes in, in portraiture, it's, it's the little things that I notice. And some of the great portrait artists, they, they capture this. You know, it's, it's the Mona Lisa smile, right? It's that subtle, um, it, it's that, that subtle hint of a smirk that we pick up. Um, and we as humans, we're all kind of primed to detect those subtle changes in a, in a form that, that indicate the expression. We're good at reading people. You know, it's our ability to understand what somebody is feeling that um, is really, uh, you know, really important to us as humans. And so we, we're really good at seeing subtle shifts and changes to the, the face. Ah, KD Labs, we're gonna be getting into the teeth soon. I'm working my way in. So part of what really makes the teeth work is that they have to be set in the mouth. Um, and, and, and they have that three-dimensional form. So I need to establish this cylindrical form of the mouth there first, and then I'm gonna be adding the teeth into that, if that makes sense. So we're working our way into that. Um, I'm gonna to try to smooth this out. Um, and so at this stage, what I wanna be doing is almost be thinking about it as a as a smooth gradation of value, as like as though it's just one kind of solid uh, cylinder inside there, and it, it kind of looks creepy right now. <laughs> I have to admit. Um, so I, I totally get it if you guys are weirded out and you want to get to drawing the teeth, because um, I do as well, and I'm trying to practice restraint um, at this point. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've got my shading stump and I'm trying to work out that structure. It gets really tricky in here because we're moving across this frontal plane of this lip and comes across the front here and then we wrap around. And so by the time we get back here, we're moving 90 degrees from this angle here, almost 90 degrees. And when I need to look at that transition from here to here and it all happens in a very small space, but I think that's going to be really critical to get that angle just right uh, so I want to stick in there, in that, that area, as much as possible. I'm going to keep this all in shadow back there, make sure that that stays back, pull out the highlights here. Um, my shoulder is cramping up right now, and it's very painful. This, this guy right here, I don't know what's going on. Um, it can be tricky. I, I saw a question come through in uh, one of the videos at Artist Network somebody asking about drawing, um, especially with kind of arthritis and, and, and other tools. But I, I noticed that, you know, drawing, I, I really lock up a lot. I don't have arthritis, but it's something to be mindful of is your posture while you're, while you're working. And if anybody has any suggestions about what you do to overcome a kind of pain um, in drawing, I'd love to hear it. I don't have any issues with my wrist, but my shoulders, when they're just kind of hanging there, can get really cramped up. Um, so having something, especially if you're standing, to manage your posture can be really helpful. So I'm looking at the structure here. Again, I'm working my way in. Um, and what I want to observe, again, is the plane. So we have this lower lip that angles inward, and then it comes out to that, that chin. I'm kind of exaggerating that motion here, and I think I've overstated it to some degree. But uh, hopefully you can kind of see that. See, and as we wrap in here, we can see the highlights, and when we wrap around here, um, we see these light forms, but they're not nearly as light as that highlight, so I need to drop the value down in here. So I'm just taking the shading stump, kind of washing over that whole area. And if I need to define some of these forms, I can come back in with my charcoal again. looking for these forms. So as I'm, I'm trying to look at the direction of my marks as I work around the structure of the lip from moving generally horizontally back here, this is a horizontal plane here, and then changing directions where it's vertical underneath. Um, one of the things I also try to, to do is really be mindful of 
that mark when it when it hits the paper if I, I almost kind of ease into it you know so it's kind of like a scooping down rather than a smack and then draw it's kind of a, it's a lighter try to be a lighter touch so I don't get these kind of dark um, uh, edges to the um, to the marks there so All right. So again, I'm, right now I'm just trying to be mindful of the values. We have these light forms here. As long as that's not as bright as this, I'm going to be in good shape. And it gets really dark in here. I'm going to feather that out. I'm going to come across and I'm going to start to render the lips a bit more. And you can see how I'm holding the pencil. It's kind of like I like it might hold chopsticks, almost something like that, where it's just kind of wedged between these fingers. Um, and it gives me control, like, like the kind of control that I get when I'm writing like this, like a tripod grip. It gives me that control, but it also allows me to utilize the side of the, the material, um, which is um, really important to me at this stage. As I'm, and then if I need to get the point, all I have to do is roll my hand up, and now I've got, a, I've got that sharp point, and I can drop it back down to, to draw on its side a little bit. Now there's a little bit of a light across here using that, um, using the kneaded eraser, I'm overstating it and I'm going to cut back into it with the charcoal. Oh, I'm seeing some good, uh, yep, yeah, shoulder rolls, I definitely need to do that, oh man. Um, But those are these are some kind of some good things to to share here as well as if you want to go to the artist network pages and share kind of in the threads. All right, so I'm trying to be really sensitive to this area here because what's happening is you know with that smile it stretches out those lips, um, and so it you know when, when if you look back at the other drawing we did of the, the mouth there was a distinct shadow underneath that lower lip because the mouth is, is stretched into a smile, we lose that, it's just this kind of thin line. And it's really important to spend time right in this area here so that it, we, that it feels like that, rip, that lip wraps around the head because um, that's what's gonna make it really feel like that smile. If we don't do that, it's going to, um, it's gonna feel awkward. That structure is so important. And in many ways, if you get the structure right, you can get away with fewer details in the whole drawing. So I'm trying to visualize a path or some, some of these darker marks. And if you notice like right in here, we lose that all together. It's a little bit darker right in here. And this is where the spot on the lip where it becomes more of a vertical plane that wraps around that cylinder. And then up here, it starts to wrap around a bit more. Let me double check the proportions. I think I, I dropped that lip too much. And then I need to erase that line there. Hopefully my head's not dipping into the shot. I, I need to remember to be mindful of that. So I just wanted to double check those proportions because one of the things we mentioned is that the height of the tooth is that same as the distance and the height of that lower lip. So. These are just short kind of vertical marks that reference that vertical plane of the mouth as it wraps around the cylinder. Um, and for me, it's really helpful to um, it, it, it try to think about the, the portrait, drawing facial features, drawing figures in general, portraits in general, uh, try to apply the same thinking to them as I do any other subject. You know, um, if I start to, to treat it differently, um, then that's, that's where I, I kind of lose my way a bit. Um, and it's so easy to do that because it, you know, there's such unique forms. But it's all about, you know, checking proportions, you, using comparative measuring, angle sighting, controlling your values. Um, this is just my shading stump here, and I'm just kind of indicating some of the texture here. And really try to visualize how that lip rolls into the into the teeth there. 
Um, and then there's a bit of a shadow here, some of a highlight, and there's some texture that I can, this shading stump helps me to suggest in here in the, 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 the texture of the lip. Um, and I'm trying to look at the, the angle of some of these lines because that's what's going to help me to, to really help reinforce the, uh, the structure there. So that feels like it's coming together. Um, and then I'm going to change the angles underneath here. Maybe, maybe run these this way. Really try to wrap around that the cylinder of the mouth there. All right. Well, we are about an hour in, so I think it's high time we get working on those teeth. Um, maybe let that just kind of be sketchy, although this is... I think I, need, I do need to indicate more of that shadow. It got kind of wiped away. So just utilizing the side of the pencil here, using the compressed charcoal, I just want to try to indicate some of the, the shadow forms here. Um, I don't think we're going to render much more than this, but I wiped away more than I anticipated of the vine charcoal there. I think by going dark, it'll help to pull out those highlights. Um, you know, I think what was bothering me about the white of the page here is that it, it was drawing my eye away and I need it to, uh, I need to draw attention to the mouth. So if the highest contrast is over here, that'll, that'll reinforce the mouth as the subject. So I've kind of lost some of the structure, but that's all right. It's kind of vignetting the, the whole drawing. So just an overhand grip where I'm holding it like this, using the, my finger to apply pressure but it allows me to um, create these broad areas of charcoal. And as I work over here, I'm trying to, trying to lift. I see some of these dark spots here that are a little distracting. Using my palm to kind of soften that a bit. There, that's better. All right, let's get into the teeth. So I, as you saw earlier, I kind of gave myself some indicators. So if this becomes a center tooth here, which is, I've just got my shading stump. It's already loaded with charcoal, so actually you can get a fair amount in there. The distance from here, from that center tooth to here, is about equivalent to the height. So it makes a, basically a square there. Within that square, I need to fit the one main front tooth here, um, as well as we can see another tooth, and then and another back in there. And this tooth back here that's tucked into the cheek, we're looking at it kind of right on its end, you know, and then it wraps around so that, you know, these teeth over here, we're looking directly on. And so it's really important to understand what the angle is of that tooth. Um, because this is, again, another area where I see um, students struggle sometimes is that, is that we end up creating, say, a structure here of the mouth, and then the teeth are kind of evenly spaced in there. Um, and so if we think about the planes at which we're looking at the teeth, it helps us to place it in the form of the mouth. This is the, the, the mouth is like a horseshoe shape that's kind of, you know, like wrapping into the head. And so when we're looking across here, we're shearing across seeing the end of the tooth, the side of the tooth, not the face of the tooth, if that makes sense. So I'm going to try to try to observe those shapes here. I'm drawing the gums right now and trying to sneak up on that form. Now, this is, this is another spot where it's, it's also helpful to be looking at the shape of the highlight and, and see that in the reference photo, there's a distinct highlight on each tooth. That means the rest of that tooth has some value associated with it. And I think what I want to do actually is I want to apply a value across all of it and then it will erase out that highlight just to get just to make sure I have that established. Um, because if I make those teeth too white, it's going to pop forward and we're going to lose that structure. So now that I, you know, I've indicated that, that center of that front tooth, I, th those give me parameters um, in which I can then start to render the teeth. Uh, and then we have 
kind of what I'm trying to do is observe in here the placement. So at, what I need to do is I need to figure out, actually that's not a great tool, I'm going to use the end of this. Again, do my comparative measuring. I'm going to take the height of that front tooth, I'm going to compare it to the width. And if I take this dimension here from the, you know, the height of the, the tooth and I compare it uh, uh, horizontally across here, it gets me essentially to the middle of that second tooth. So I've got this, this front tooth in here and then the middle of the second one. So if I take this, turn it on its side, it should be the middle. That helps me to visualize where that next tooth might be. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to look at, the, draw the shape of the gums, and then I'll build the tooth from there. So I'm kind of sneaking up on it. What can also be challenging for um, some students is, to, is to, to overcome the desire to outline the tooth. And this is where it's really important to be, to be mindful of edges. Try to avoid lines as much as possible because those lines, if we outline the teeth, they're really going to project forward and feel uncomfortable. All right, so I'm just kind of sneaking up on the shapes here. And so this is where um, an understanding of positive and negative space can be really helpful. So as we look along that edge of the bottom of lip, you know, there's, um, we can see that general shape of that lip. And it, it kind of, it's a, again, a bunch of compound curves. Um, and I can look at the, the, that dark space in there that negative space to help with the teeth. And she's got generally nice straight teeth here, but there's, you know, there's, they're not perfectly straight as no teeth are. So I'm kind of working my way in. So rather than drawing the edges of the teeth, I'm trying to draw the gums and then the shape this kind of dark form here underneath them. So here that, that tooth kind of cuts in behind that the lip. Draw that shadow. And we have the tooth back in here that falls into shadow. So this is, where, again, it's important to kind of keep in mind what we were talking earlier about, about the structure, why I kind of created that as a solid cylinder, and then I'm dividing that in, into, the, into the teeth, because as we move back in here, the value here is much darker than what we see in the front of, of the teeth. Um, but because it's dark around it, our brain interprets it, and we understand it to be the white of the, of the tooth. So I'm going to continue to draw the shapes around it. Now I'm going to work my way forward. I'm going to have the, the teeth kind of indicated here, but there's not a lot of specificity to them. So I can start to add that. And I'm keeping my eyes blurred, looking for the shape of the shadows. So in here, I'm seeing this shadow, and I need to be mindful that it's a shadow and not a line, and not to draw it as a line, but as a thin shadow. So kind of sneaking up on, on that form. And then it gets, we see the edge of the tooth around here. So again, drawing values and shapes, not lines. All right. I realize I spent, you know, a, a majority of the drawing and right in this spot here. It's kind of interesting. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up around here. Draw that form. And try to observe that specific shape of that tooth. 
and then try to see the form of each tooth as well, right? So that it, it's not a flat shape. There's structure to each of these teeth and that highlight helps to illustrate that. And we're gonna pull out those highlights in a little bit. So we're, you know, the kind of in the space, you know, where the two teeth meet, they kind of wrap in on one another and they fall kind of into shadow. Okay, so right in here, let's see. It's a few little indicators. Um, so I'm sorry for, I'm just kind of focusing a little bit more because I, and I'm double checking. These proportions are off a little bit. I need to bring this tooth over a little bit more. And um, let me see if I can kind of pull this out a little bit. Okay. I come across here and then I haven't done this negative space over here. So take your time, kind of ease into drawing the teeth. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rubber eraser and I'm gonna pull out these highlights, starting with this front tooth here. And I'm probably gonna overstate them, make them bigger than they actually are. But I'm really trying to observe the specific shape and angle of them. Um, where the light is strongest, it's, you know, or hitting them more directly, it's a bigger shape. And then as, you know, the teeth around here, they kind of wrap around and there's just these thin little slivers of light. And you can see I over, I overdrew them, they're too strong, but I can cut back in using that shading stump and refine that. I think these teeth are getting too dark, so I'm gonna, but I'm gonna lighten them up a little bit. I wanna just wanna establish that, that highlight. And I'll show you how I, I'm gonna lighten those up. Okay. So now I can just take my kneaded eraser. You know, I kind of drawn her teeth too dark and I'm just gonna flatten this out, kind of press in on here and kind of lift up some of that charcoal. So then hopefully in such a way that it still maintains that, that highlight there. I think I pulled up too much right in here, that upper lip. So hopefully that makes sense. I think we're getting near to the end I don't think I'm gonna do much more to the drawing. This is really, as a, as a mouth study, I feel like we've learned a fair amount of it about you know, how to draw kind of teeth and ultimately what's kind of important in drawing them and how to look at the structure of, of the mouth. Now I'm just kind of refining a little bit here and there Finding that balance in values. All right. Well, welcome everybody if you're new. Um, and if you happen to be joining late, you, this goes up as a recording. You can always watch it again when, uh, when you have time. What are we doing? Oh, Wednesday, we're drawing an owl. So I meet every Monday, Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and I am really looking forward to drawing an owl on Wednesday, and then I gotta, I'm working on putting together um, the next batch of uh, subjects we're drawing together. Uh, 
Um, I like, I enjoy seeing everybody's suggestions about what to draw. Uh, so if you do have any suggestions, things you'd like me to draw, it's helpful to, to put them into the discussion field underneath the, the, uh, um, the recording of it. And it's harder for me to go back and look at these live comments to find the, the, the chats. But would, if, you know, like I said, as soon as this is over, it will go up as a recording and you can leave comments there or at, at Artist Network at the, on the Drawing Together page. So there's a link in the description to the Drawing Together page, again, where you'll find links to all the show pages. You can see what work people have been sharing. People also have also been sharing on Facebook, which is awesome. So they found the Artist Network Facebook page. Um, seeing some really cool drawings come through there. Uh, hopefully this is, uh, hopefully this has been helpful. I feel like this came together a little bit better than my initial attempt. Um, you know, I, you know, I, we could continue and you know, for yourself, you may want to add a little bit more detail in some of these other areas, but I think as, as a study of, um, of a smile, this works out pretty well. Um, what do we do here? So I'm just going to hang out for a little bit, see if there's any lingering questions. If not, I will see you all on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, so I've seen a few of you chiming in from uh, Colorado. It's always good to see some other Coloradans. Um, so I will see you then. Like I said, I'm just going to hang on here for a little bit, see if there's any additional questions. But thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Um, and I can't wait to see all of your drawings as well. Judy, you're asking about flowers. I took some reference photos this morning. I hope they work out, but I look forward to doing another flower soon. So uh, I appreciate that comment and I'm, uh, hopefully that we'll be able to get that coming up soon. All right, Ooh. fix that highlight. Got a little blotchy there, okay. Ania, waterfall, that would be a good one. Let me see if I can find a good reference photo. Here are the mountains. I may do a, uh, I could do another mountain drawing. Yeah, I have a great view of Long's Peak from where I'm at right now. So perhaps this evening I'll take a picture of that and then see if I can find a waterfall image. Head up to Rocky Mountain National Park and get some of those waterfalls. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you all again. I appreciate it. See you all on Wednesday.